Hi, my name is Keegan and I'm the founder of Joiner Services and this is Engineers in Automation. On today's episode, we're going to talk to Malachi Greb, the owner, CEO, and engineer of Elite Automation. Their company specializes in design, programming, and installation of automation equipment. Now let's go talk automation. Welcome. I have my guest here, Malachi Greb. Welcome to the show. Appreciate you coming on. Um, could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm Malachi Greb, uh, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. Um, somewhat newer company. Started out a couple years ago. Um, overall, the journey journey has been uh, it's been a challenge, but been a wonderful challenge. Uh, we're up to, I believe, 15 employees now. Which wow! Like congratulations. Cra crazy, crazy growth. I mean, we have some uh, definitely some very creative um, strategies that, that give us the ability to grow like that. Um, you know, me personally, I've I've been in the industrial automation industry for I think it's been about ten years now. Um, I think I spent eight years with uh, with the systems integrator, basically doing what I do. Uh, pretty much my entirety of going in, going through college. Uh, I expressed interest back when I was in college about wanting to be on the road and working. And uh, she had happened to go to college with a uh, somebody who had started their own company doing industrial automation. So mm -hmm. I landed that I landed that job with them and my journey just kind of started and I stuck it out with that company for about eight years before branching off and doing my own thing. Oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. That's good to hear. And what year did you start then? It's 2020. Okay. Wow. Good. Congratulations. You're already up to 15 employees. That's pretty impressive then. Yeah. We, I mean, we, yeah, we was 20, 2019. There was about six months we were, we were in business, but it was like still the background, you know, getting stuff prepared, working yeah. on set a little bit in the background, but I still had a nine to five job and, you know, just kind of was getting some of the footwork done. Yeah, congratulations. And also, let me also say congratulations also. I saw you hit 12,000 followers over on LinkedIn. So if you're not following him, go ahead and go follow him over there. You're the content king, man. How the heck do you do it? That's what I want to know. Well, I mean, in reality, um, I kind of accredit it to a couple of different things. One is sheer execution. And, and, and then the second thing is having a team to back me up. So uh, you know, our team handles a lot of, a lot of our creative. Now I kind of just approve a lot of it, give them like things to go off of, um, and, and just to get involved in the approval process and just making things, uh, look the way that I want our brand to look overall. And then, uh, you know, the execution side of things, it's like, I was talking to somebody today, I was at an event and, uh, basically the conversation went along the lines of like, I barely know what I'm doing five minutes from now. It's kind of like, I just pull out my calendar. Oh, okay. oh wow. I got this thing I need to attend to, you yeah. know, I'll kind of do a, a brief overview like a day or two before, make sure I don't have to be like out of town. I don't have to be like a few hours away. Um, and if I don't, I kind of just don't put any brain power into like what my, my next steps are. Um, I generally take a few days out of the week and map out kind of what like my main key goals are for the week. And then uh, I put those on a calendar and I kind of don't think about them again until they pop up on my calendar. Wow. Wow. Well, that, so let me ask you this then. Is there a platform then that you prefer to share more on? I know you have some great YouTube videos out there. Um, you're pretty active on LinkedIn. Is there a platform that you prefer, especially for your business? Yeah. So we're, definitely 110% LinkedIn. Uh, we don't really social media wise, we, we, we're, we use everything else, but like, I'm not like truly super active on the other platforms. Mm -hmm. Um, I do love YouTube in the sense of like, just being a utility to, to be able to help like other engineers out in the field, um, like college students. Uh, it's kind of like our, our, our genre is just the automation industry and like just getting people more involved. Cause like, I didn't even know about automation until I walked into a college. It was like, what do y'all have? And they're like, yeah. well, we have automotive, we have like some welding, you know? And they're like, we have this, we have automation. I'm like, what's that? You know? Yeah. Tell me more. <laughs> now me, I went down the weld path. So, um, yeah. although we both came to the, to the same spot here, we're both in automation. Uh, 
But um, so, so with that, I guess, you know, you have a lot of, a lot of work life balance outside of work, you know, that you're involved with. I know you're also a fitness buff like myself and have a family. How do you keep that separated? You know, how do you spend, make enough time? So you do get that little bit of, of enjoyment outside of the automation and industry. Yeah. So I think this one, this one's huge and something I'm actually really passionate about. Um, I think that for everybody, they have their own version of what work-life balance is, and they really need to create that for themselves. They can't go based off of what anybody else's version of that is. Um, so for me, I'm, I'm like 110% okay with like pretty much not seeing my kids Monday through Friday. Uh, mm. And, and whereas I do see them, they're there in the evenings and whatnot, but it, that's where I devote my work. And then, and then when it comes to the weekend, I try to completely shut off. If I have the ability, oh, okay. yeah. I try not to really answer emails or, or do much of anything. Uh, sometimes like on a Saturday morning, I may wake, wake up at like 5 a.m., work a couple hours. And then by the time like 7 a.m. rolls around and kids are starting to wake up, it's just, I'm, I'm done with it and I can yeah. Go spend, spend some time with the family yeah that's great and uh how do you make time for fitness especially you know you i know you do spend some time on the road how do you how do you squeeze that in there too yeah uh so for the fitness thing man it's like i just one i kind of adapt when when i work out so it kind of shifts around in my life quite a bit uh like as of now i'm doing uh, I'm working out in the morning time, so I'm waking up at like 4.30 in the morning, trying to be at the gym by 5 and trying to leave by 7. Um, but then I've had schedules where I'm where I'm trying to be at the gym at, at 4, 4 in the afternoon and try to leave by 6 p.m. Um, yeah. Kind of just let it follow my life and what works best with my current schedule. Yeah. Yeah, understandable. So on the automation side, let's kind of jump back into that now. What what's a great automation project that you've worked on that you've really enjoyed? Can you kind of go into some detail about that? It's really kind of it's definitely hard, but I like all of them. Yeah, uh, well, so so do I. I love anything, you know, whether you're making small equipment or you know working on an assembly line. It's all fun. But do you have you know what's the best project you've done? You think? Um. So I definitely like anything that involves like vision and line tracking. Um, one application that we did that was pretty intensive was uh, basically we, we picked the part, we did a dispensing application on it, then we had to do a 3D measurement of the uh, volume of dispensed material onto the part uh, to meet to meet tolerances, and then that part had to be placed within like. 0.1 millimeter uh, onto like a on a piece of glass. Um, that was that was definitely an interesting uh, interesting project. Mainly mainly for the tolerance sake, it was just like super high tolerances and yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess the next question then would be, what are some of your likes about the automation industry? Do you have a top three likes about the industry? Um, or top two that you that you really enjoy? Probably the, I would say at least top two for sure. Um, one is especially being systems integrator. I love the diversity. I love that every application is different. So it's like you can be Absolutely. doing it for years and, and running applications you've never even done before. So, and every ap application technically you've never done before, unless it's an exact repeat system, which doesn't happen very often, you know, uh, you're, you're normally handling a different part or something about the operation is different. Um, and then probably the, the second thing is the technology. Uh, it's just really cool, like being able to just see how data works and how, how data works from like the real world and goes into the digital world and, and doing stuff like, you know, robots, Cartesian space and, and like how like line tracking, like how that correlates with the robot and or, or vision location. Um, you know, and after you understand a lot of it, you kind of understand it's fundamentally the same. It's just kind of a, a different way of going about doing it and, or, or it's a, a different like input device. Um, and, and really, I think there's going to be also a ton into the future on what we do with that space. I like 
our world as a whole, like going into like autonomous vehicles and stuff like that, you're going to start seeing a lot of these industrial technologies in our, our actual day-to-day -day lives. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So on that, let's go the opposite way. Give me a dislike about the automation industry. Huh. Dislike. That was a hard one. Uh, realistically, I think it's not even automation industry specific, but I think it's called business itself. Mm -hmm. I, it moves too slow. Oh, um, yeah. Good one. It's like, yeah. like, you know, the discussion of like talking about doing a project, it's like that discussion could be six months before yeah. you go you know, to, to, to move on a project. Um, or, or just like a lot of things is just like, uh, it could be something like just, just engineer whatever the thing is. Like instead of having like 50 meetings to discuss whatever before you do the engineering, it's like there's a lot of time wasted in like kind of like the bureaucratic like side of things. Yeah. Well, and I guess that probably does help you, though, being a little bit smaller company, though, make those quick and fast decisions as well, I would think. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and that's one thing I'm really trying to do with our, do with our company into the future is like, I want to try to keep, like, design our company and, and have systems in place that we can always operate very quickly. So instead of, instead of us becoming like this, this, this massive company where, you know, this team over here has to get approval from these guys up here. I more so want like individual teams to operate as their own entity in a sense, yep. right? Not like they necessarily have to get approval. It's like this person is in charge of their project. They own their project. They do, you know, all the tasks that are necessary. And then maybe, maybe you have like an upper, uh, upper, upper level, like um, project manager or something like that, who just, just ensures that like, on a business standpoint, like this, this project's going smoothly, you know, all the, all the customer requirements are being met, uh, customer happy, kind of just more of like the PR side of things, which should still have like no impact on what's going on with the project itself, unless it's, unless it's pushing that project to move quicker, uh, move quicker and, and just move forward with its operation. That kind of, you know, rolls into my my next one, what's some lessons learned in the automation industry that you've had? Uh, the one key one is things always take longer than you think they're going to take. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Absolutely, absolutely. And then on that, lessons learned. Where do you go to learn? So you, you know you're going to run into some issues here and there. Where is your go-to spot to find out more information? YouTube, other engineers, other owners. Where do you go to learn? Yep, so definitely it's probably YouTube is the first number one thing. Um, and it's part of the reason why uh, we created a YouTube channel is because like, boom, that's what I go to. I'm going to YouTube and it's like, wow, there's nothing here really, you know? Uh, so then it kind of falls back into now you're really probably the best, next best thing is like documentation. Uh, you know, like going through like Fanix documentation or Alan Bradley's PLC documentation or um forums too forums are actually really good like really old school forums uh those tend to be very very helpful especially whenever you have like some weird issue that you're seeing and it doesn't yeah. really you know like maybe like say for going back to panic again in, in its manual it says it's this it's that it's that and all of them say the servo board's bad but it's like it's like it just defaults to replace the servo board but that's right. not like the root cause of what the problem is. It's just how their manual operates. Um, so yeah, you can you can get some good content out of the forums that can help help save you from replacing a servo drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good. Um, so I know you mentioned it earlier about some of the events that you're traveling to. What what are the events that you're going to this year? I know there's quite a few now. Kind of COVID's starting to slow down, and everyone's getting back out there. Are there a few events that you're looking forward to? Maybe coming up to the Detroit area to Automate. I'll be. I'll hopefully be there. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully. I'll, hopefully. I'll see you there. Um, so automate's definitely one of them. Uh, there's a Modex event that's here. I think it's like the 28th through the 31st. Um, that one's in Atlanta, Georgia, I believe. Uh, and really, all these events, I'm, I'm anticipating like being there for the whole extent of the event. Like right. four day event. I'm gonna probably be there the whole four days. 
Um, yeah, the power of networking. Yeah, probably from the time the doors open to the doors close. Oh, uh, great. And then doing some other small ones. So uh, like uh, Neth, one of our vendors, they've been hosting some events and, and these events, they're, they're in all their sales regions. And then I'm following those those Neth events around to all their different sales regions to uh, basically the same thing, just network with them, see what kind of technologies they have, um, yeah. build build stronger relationships with the individuals that are uh, that are our vendors and that we do work with on a regular basis. Um, actually, a funny story. I'd, before this meeting, I shot a YouTube video that was basically explaining for individuals to go to events to like land jobs. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> great. Great. Good timing then. <laughs> Good. And then what do you see kind of as the future of automation? And then where do you see the future of your company? So uh, future of automation, I think, I think it's completely endless. I think that everything's going to get more virtual, more virtual. I mean, you got stuff even like, like the metaverse type of stuff where that's like completely virtual. And then at that point, it's like, depending on how much we adopt that, then is, is there even a real world? You know, do we even live in a real world? To turn yeah. into matrix, you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> but I think that, that our real world will, will continue to move in that direction. Um, you're going to start to see really everything just from, from the purchase of an item to it being delivered at your door, the whole entire process is probably going to get restructured. And, and, you, and you see companies that are, that are performing extremely well, like Amazon's, who've already adopted like AMR technologies, mm -hmm. like just completely like did an overhaul on their infrastructure. Or as they developed their infrastructure, they developed it in a way around automation. So like, that's a big thing is manufacturing itself is going to have to kind of go back to the drawing board and, and, and develop itself around automation as a whole. And, and how do we, how do we go from somebody clicking a button on a website to it actually producing the part, putting it on a truck and, 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 and delivering it to their house. I'm, I'm uh, waiting for the day where I can sit in the comfort of my own home and program a robot, you know, <laughs> with some, put some goggles on, move some things around. Right. It, it'll happen, but waiting for that day. Yeah. And then, so like for us as a company, so like that's part of our business model is like, we, we are, we are programming so many things remotely. Uh, we're really doing like the last, like five to 10% of the programming on the physical robot. We're trying to do, we're trying to do everything in simulation and uh, yep. through simulated softwares. Um, and then as far as like our long-term goals, uh, a huge one is we want to get more involved with the uh, education space. So we want to get uh, get to the point where we are like embedded within like even like elementary school, middle school, high school, all the way through to college. Um, awesome. Yeah, where we're, where we're like, you know, especially at some point where we're like financially funding some of these or if we're just helping them develop these systems, just whatever level of involvement we can get in and, and obviously it'll change as we grow as a company but even at this point like you know with like me being involved with like maybe just doing guest speaking at these facilities and uh you know long term it's it's having the fully integrated um educational system with them and even maybe even starting our own accredited colleges uh wow. awesome automation space oh that's really cool really cool and uh, I guess another question I had, you're a man of uh, lots of inspirational words. What's your favorite inspirational quote that you have right now, whether it's your own or someone else's? The first one that comes to mind is the truth always wins. Um, you know, uh, I probably have like, I, you know, I, I probably have like, you know, five to 10 of them that are like my full ones that I kind of live by. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the ability to deliver is a, is a huge like career one. Uh, you know, if you have the ability to deliver, then you can do just about anything. Um, doing the right thing is always the right thing. I mean, yeah. these are all kind of like just simple, like, you know, ways to live by and just 
to me, I feel like they're they're like universal laws that if you follow them, that good things come to all people around you and yep. yourself. You know? Couldn't agree. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. And kind of last question here to sort of wrap this up. Where can people find you? Well, people can mainly find me on LinkedIn, uh, especially if you want to try to communicate with me um, and or see what we have going on. Uh, then secondly, you can see me on YouTube. Uh, there's not going to be a direct communication with me, but you can see like some of the things we're going that we have going on and my, my insights on the industry, things along those lines. Um, but yeah, definitely LinkedIn is the place to go. And uh, I advise anybody who doesn't have a LinkedIn account to get a LinkedIn account. Uh, it's the best. It's one of the best places to, to get a job, to network, learn, learn. Yeah, yep. that's a great place. Great yep. place. Awesome. Great advice. Well. Thanks for uh, being on the show with us today, and we hope you all enjoyed this episode. So give us a like, comment, share, and subscribe, and we look forward to having you join us next time on Engineers in Automation. Thanks. Have a good one.